morning, everyone. Today is Monday, September 20th, and welcome to Motivation Monday. My name is Lisa McCrary, and as always, I am so happy you guys are all here with me today. Let's go ahead and jump right into why we are here. And as always, we're going to start with our quote for the week. This week quote comes from Bob Berg. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Bob Berg, he is an author, also a motivational speaker. Um, and, is he, and he's written a number of different books. A couple of his more popular books um, are Endless Referrals as well as The Go-Giver. Um, I haven't had the privilege of reading these books, but I listed them because I hear they're pretty good books. So I wanted to give you guys that little nugget. And what Bob said is the successful networkers I know, the ones receiving tons of referrals and feeling truly happy about themselves, continually put the other person's needs ahead of their own. Oh my goodness, guys, this, this particular quote, and, and I love, you know, most quotes because I love quotes, but this particular quote here really resonated with me and I really enjoyed. Um, actually, when I read it, it actually gave me goosebumps. And the reason why is because it's really personal to me. Um, and that's because this is how I ran my business. This is um, really what made me one of the top three agents um, within my company amongst thousands of different agents. Um, I've been in the business for a long time and I've seen so many people who have come into this business just to make money. And, and don't get me wrong, we're all here to make money and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but if that's your only focus, um, for those people, I just didn't see them lasting very long. Um, mainly because they weren't connecting with their customers. Really, success comes from surrounding yourself with the right people for the right reasons. And just let me say, networking and helping your clients by putting them and their needs first are the two best investments that you can make in your business. The more you do of both, the more successful you will become. So I hope you guys enjoyed that quote. I know I did. Welcome again, my friends, to Motivational Monday, Motivation Monday. And I am going to start today with um, our topics. Um, we're going to start off with our tip of the week. And then we're going to move on to my favorite part, which is are the sales and shout outs where we recognize our top carriers as well as our sales agents. And last but not least, we will um, be reviewing our sales topic for the week, which is easy steps to increasing your leads with warm marketing tactics. I'm excited about that one. That one should be a really good one. The first tip of the week, I'm going to tell you guys, pull out your pen or your calendar or something and write down October 8th. I want you to mark your calendars. October, I'm sorry, October 7th, not 8th. October 7th. Um, there's going to be an ACA training available to all agents. This ACA training is designed really to help you prepare um, for the ACA open enrollment year. We're gonna have carrier updates as well as what is necessary for state appointments so that you can be able to adequately help your clients. Um, so make sure that you mark your calendars. You do have to register for this. Registration is pretty easy. All you have to do is go to AHCP's website once there, look for ACA at from in the top bar at the top and choose ACA. Once you select ACA, you're going to see this registration link and that's where you can actually go and register. So please go out there and do that if you are planning on selling ACA plans. The other thing I would like to also remind everyone is that um, if you're planning on selling ACA plans for your clients um, for 2022 plans, make sure you complete your certification. Now, whether you have 
um, been certified in the past or if you're completely new to this, you still have to complete your certification. Certification is very easy. It's also free. Um, all you would need to do is go to the first website that I have listed here, which is portal.cms.gov forward slash portal forward slash. Once there, if you are a new user, you're just going to simply click on that new user registration and complete all the different things that need to be um, added in order for you to complete your certification. If you are returning um, agent and you have done this before you just simply put in your user ID and password and follow the instructions now I know and I get questions all the time um, about how does this really work this this um, system is a little bit confusing well AHCP made it really easy for you guys because there are some great reference guides on the AHCP website. So make sure you go out there if you think you're gonna need some added help or some kind of reference to help you get through it, go to ahcpsales.com forward slash ACA forward slash, and there are some useful guides there that will help walk you through the whole process. As always, guys, we are here for you. For you. So even with all of that, if you still have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us here at training at ahcpsales.com and we will be happy, happy to help you guys with making sure that you are getting the proper certification. Okay, let's move on to my exciting part, our sales shout outs. Um, it's sort of funny, every time I get to this page, I always sit up in my seat because I, I find this part exciting, especially when I'm recognizing our, our agents. That's really exciting. Um, but first, we're going to start with highlighting our most popular carriers for the week of September 13th. Um, it looks like with short-term medical plans, UHC Golden Rule just ruled the way. Um, they had a very strong week. Limited Med Sales, National General showed up and showed out. And as far as accident sales, we have um, National General. Critical Illness, UHC, once again, did a wonderful job in their sales there. And I got to say, the dental plan with National General is just, it has just gained so much popularity with the agents as well as with our clients. So it continued to be one of those number one plans when it comes to dental plans. So if you aren't familiar with it, please check it out. Now let's turn to our superstars and our superstar sales agents for the week, um, for the week of September 13th. And in short-term medical sales, we have Blake, Evan, and Max. Congratulations to the three of you in leading the way in short-term medical sales. In limited med, we have Dominic and Sean. Congratulations to the two of you. And then in accident sales, we have a repeat name here, Blake and Cody. Congratulations to the two of you in selling accident plans. Now, one thing I do want to mention, I want to give a special shout out to Blake because when I see um, the name um, on this leadership um, recognition board i always look to see for those repeat names because it gives me an idea if people are bundling and it looks like blake is doing a really good job bundling because not only is he number one in short-term medical sales he is also number one in accident sales so i want to give a special special shout out to blake for being doing such a wonderful thing and selling those comprehensive plans to his clients and packaging them up for him. So good job to everyone and good job, Blake. Now let's turn to the topic of the week and we're gonna talk about warm marketing, specifically easy steps to increase um, your leads. Now I'm gonna say, I'm gonna start this off first by just letting you guys know something you probably already know. Our customers are always changing. 
um, what they are expecting, what they need from us. That's constantly changing too. Um, what I did 22 years ago to generate leads is so very different than what I have to do now in order to generate leads. Um, and really our customers have become smarter, more informed, and they have a lot more resources to them when it comes to shopping for their insurance needs. And what that requires from us as agents is that we need to step up our game as well, especially when it comes to making sure that we are more visible to our clients so that we can stay competitive. So how do we do that? Well, warm marketing is one of those ways that we can do that. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. But before we get started with specifically warm marketing, I, I always like to, to do the background and then get into the actual subject matter. We're going to um, really identify the types of leads that are out there. And we have three here on our screen, cold leads, warm leads, and qualified leads. Now, cold leads are pretty much just what they sound like. They're pretty darn cold. Um, I can remember back in the day when I first started in the business and I went to my leader and I said, hey, I'm ready to make calls. Where's my list? And um, they, he actually handed me the phone book. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? He said, that's your list. And um, I turned to the A section and I started the arduous task of cold calling. And basically what cold calling is, is that you're calling people that have no need for what you sell. They weren't expecting your call. They might have a need. I can't say they don't have a need because that's for you to decide. But they were not expecting your call. They didn't sign up for any information. They didn't come to any kind of webinar. They didn't show any interest whatsoever and you have absolutely no connection with them it's a completely cold call it's one of the hardest calls that you can make out there and when i first started i looked like this guy here with all these darn phones because keeping it organized can also be a little bit of a challenge then we go over to our warm leads nowadays um, the really successful agents have learned how to utilize their contacts with people to build their lead database. And these are our warm leads. So warm leads are really those prospects that we knowingly or unknowingly have connections to. So that might be a little confusing for you when I say knowingly or unknowingly. Knowingly are usually those people like your family members, the people you work out at the gym, uh, maybe professors at your school. Um, it could be somebody you have some sort of connection with. But you also have unknowing leads out there or prospects. And those are the ones that might visit your, um, your website. They might visit your social media page. They might read your blogs. Those are all unknowingly um, prospects that you have. These are also very good warm leads. Um, these leads here, the warm leads, they tend to progress much further in the sales cycle because you have that connection. Um, and that really helps when you're trying to pitch what it is that you're selling. So really to give you an example of some of those warm leads, to give you an example of a warm lead, um, one would, would probably be, um, let me think, um, say if someone, you know, you have, like I said, you have your, your mother or your father or um, your cousin, they don't necessarily have a lead, but it's somebody that you know and you have a connection to and they know other people. So that's what makes them that warm lead. The last lead that we have here is the Cadillac of leads that I like to say. I like to call them the Cadillac of leads. And the reason why these are our qualified leads. These um, really are most agents favorite leads because these people are, they tend to be closest to the buying stage. 
Um, these are your prospects that really um, know what they're looking for, have done a little research. Um, when you talk to them, they have specific things that um, they want to see happen. And if you are able to provide those specific things, more than likely you will close the sale. Um, examples of some of our qualified leads are uh, maybe somebody who has lost a job and they need insurance. Their, their COBRA is way too expensive and they need another option. So this would be one of those qualified leads. You don't have a connection with them. It's, it's on that colder side, but they have a need. So um, these are our qualified leads. Another one would be like, say if someone was, um, someone, um, an example, a great example is my sister-in-law. My sister-in-law is going to retire next year. She'll be 56. Um, Medicare for her doesn't start until 65 and for everybody else. So she has a gap of not having insurance. She is someone that is actively looking for insurance during that time frame, So that would be a qualified lead. So I wanted to give you a little bit of a background of that before we move on to the subject at hand, which, it, which are um, the warm leads. So we're gonna turn our attention specifically to our warm leads. So what exactly is a warm lead um, or warm marketing, I should say? Um, warm marketing is usually de defined as networking with potential customers that you have previously had some type of contact with. And like I said, that can be knowingly or unknowingly. Sometimes people refer to these um, individuals as spheres of influence. You might have heard that before. Now, if you notice on my screen, I have all different types of people on there. And really when it comes to those warm leads and when you're warm marketing, you will find them anywhere. It could be the builder that builds your home. It could be the restaurant you frequent often and the maitre d' there or um, you know some of the people that work there. It could be your doctor. It could be a neighbor. It can be absolutely anybody at all. Um, could be that warm lead. But what, this is the thing that, that um, I really want to try and, and, and get through to, to all of you and help you to understand. Um, a lot of times when it comes to these warm leads, people feel very intrusive. Um, they, they feel like, oh my God, you're telling me I got to talk to a family member, or I got to talk to my doctor, or I have to talk to, you know, somebody that I know that that's pretty intrusive. And, and I'm not sure. And if you're an introvert like me, that doesn't necessarily make you feel nice and warm and fuzzy on the inside. But I want you guys to think about it like this. If you were a doctor in a room with a bunch of sick people, I mean, really sick people that need your help or somebody that was injured, would you not hesitate to offer your help to those people who were in desperate need? I would bet that you would. Why should we as insurance agents not do the same thing? The service that you provide to your clients every single day, make it possible for them to be able to get the, medic care, the medical care that they so desperately need. You know, really without good insurance, the results can be devastating. You know, you have people filing bankruptcy, um, people can't, aff can't afford their medication or even death. And, and I'm gonna tell you guys, this has really hit um, home for me personally because you know, my mother-in-law was one of those people that were affected by this. And, and had I been selling insurance at this time, maybe I would have made a difference. But she was one of those people that had insurance um, through her employer, but it just wasn't good enough to take care of her sons, um, my brother-in-law's type 1 diabetes, and her heart disease. And she had to make a choice on which prescription drug she was going to get. And she chose to give, 
to get the prescription drugs for my brother-in-law. And um, before the age of, of 55, my mother-in-law actually lost her life due to congestive heart failure. Um, this is a real story. This is personal. And this is happening out there every single day to people that we know. And this is what I'm talking about. Our, the warm marketing, our spheres of influences, our, the people that we know around them. I'm talking about my mother-in-law. How, that's, how closer can you get than that? So there are people out there that have real problems. Some facts that I do want to share with you guys is that so that you can under, really understand how deep this problem is, because I really want to create some belief in you that talking to your spheres of influence, talking to the people that you are connected with can make all the difference in the world and how you do your business, how hard it, how easy it will become at doing your business because you don't have to work harder because you're working smarter. Listen to this. Over half of the people in the United States have less than $1,000 in their savings account. And the deductible on the ACA plan for um, plan year 2022 is going to be $8,700. That could be a serious problem for some people, even for people who are making decent incomes, because that is that's pretty high, especially if they have like a serious illness or a major accident. In 2018, 27.5 million people did not have health insurance at any point during the year. That's scary. As insurance agents, we are constantly surrounded by both healthy and sick people who need our help. We have an obligation to let those people know what we do and how we're able to help our customers. People won't always come to you because a lot of times they don't even know the questions to ask. My sister-in-law who's retiring, she recently talked to me and she said, Lisa, I don't even know what to ask you, what questions to ask you because I don't understand insurance. This is happening with the folks that you are in contact with. So when we talk about our warm marketing and putting together our spheres of influence or people that we're connected to. The question is, how do we do that? That's what I'm going to tell you today. And that's what I'm going to share with you. So when it comes to warm marketing, you want to create a database. That's your goal. You're trying to create a database. The first step in building that database, that warm lead database, is to take a trip down memory lane. Um, make a comprehensive list of every person you can think of. And I mean every person. I have down at the bottom, you know, don't prejudge the people that go on your list. You're brainstorming here. You want to throw out everybody that you absolutely know. So to give you some, some thought on, on where my thoughts are with this, if, if you have somebody that has been negative to you in, in your life, and in, in your mind you're thinking, I'm not putting them on the list. No, put them on the list. Time has passed. If you have someone that was difficult to get along with, put them on the list. If you have a best friend, put your best friend on that list. If you have someone that's 89 years old or 98 years old, you know, you're, you're thinking, well, how am I going to help them? Put them on the list because sometimes it's, and I'm going to tell you why. I don't want to give it away. I'm going to tell you why that's important. Even if you have someone that's 18 years old, put them on the list. Like I said, right now, you're just trying to brainstorm and there is no prejudging. The next thing that you are going to do is you're going to apply the two, this is step two, you're going to apply the two degrees of separation rule. And what is the two degree of separation rule? A degree of separation is a measure of social distance between people. You are one degree away from 
everybody that you know and you're two degrees away from everyone that they know. Now you look at this list that you just created and think about the people that they know. So that's the second step that you're doing. Once again, don't at this point, you're not worrying about um, what you're going to do with this list. You're not worrying about scripting. You're not worrying about any of those things. You are just brainstorming, you're creating, you're going down memory lane, then you're d doing your two degrees of separation. Who do the people that you know know? And you're just writing this information down. Step number three, constantly expand that list. Now, most pros at this have a goal to add at least two people to their list every single day. They might not prospect them and more than likely they're not going to prospect them. They just go on the list and then what they do is they find a way to connect and get in touch with these people. So that is the key here. We are building relationships by using warm marketing in order to spread our message. But first, you're building the relationship. And I'm going to elaborate on that in a little bit. So I'm going to ask you guys, how hard would it be to raise your awareness and add two people a day to your list? And if you think about this, if you add two people a day to your list, that's six people a week, and that's which will equal about 624 new people a year it went in your marketing warm marketing database and then after five years you have over 3,000 people in your warm marketing database just by writing down who you see so can you see, if you think about this, can you see why the pros don't worry about running out of people to talk to? Do you see why the pros aren't cold calling? This is working smarter versus working harder. Now, I probably have some folks that are listening that are saying, well, I'm young. You know, I, have, I haven't met that many people. I don't, you know, I don't know all that many people. Or you might be like me and you're like, I'm really an introvert. And when people come my way, I usually go the other way. So um, I don't know that many people either. Well, I have a solution even for you guys. You come in contact with people every single day. Just add those people to your list. You meet people through online social media. Add those people to your list. I've already mentioned family and friends. You're going to add those people to your list. The people that you do business with, where do they go? On your list. Just make sure this is the thing. This is the key. And this is what I had to learn about warm marketing. And this is what I had to learn about networking as well. There are two things you need to do. One is you always need to be listening. When I'm in a restaurant, when I'm shopping, when wherever I'm at, I'm always listening. The other thing is my head is always on a swivel. So I'm listening. And if I hear of an opportunity, that maybe I can get to know somebody and I'm not walking up to them, handing them my card and saying, look what I do and I can help you with your insurance needs and blah, 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 blah. It's more of finding a new friend, finding somebody else that you can add to your database that you have developed a connection to. So when I'm out and about and I see somebody and I maybe I like their shoes, I'll say, oh, my goodness, your shoes are so nice. Where did you get those shoes from? You know, and I strike up that conversation and I end up saying, you know, you are a really nice person. Can we exchange numbers? I would really love to stay in contact with you. And it goes from there. Not everybody's going to say yes but not everybody's going to say no either. So it's all about building 
that database. So what I'm going to do, and I want to make sure I'm not leaving anything out. And I think we are good to go. So the next page I want to go to is tips on jogging your memory. And this is pretty small and I apologize for this. But what I did is at the bottom of this screen, I have a reference and it's Eric Worre's The Ultimate Memory Jogger. Write that down. Um, great resource. I got when I researched this in order to prepare this, I actually used his material to help me in my research. Great resource because a lot of times you don't know all the, you don't realize how many people you know. And this particular um, document that he has created will help you jog your memory. So here are a few things that you will see in this particular document. One would be your family. We already talked about that. Um, a list um, you already have, maybe the people that are on your social media, maybe your Christmas list, maybe um, your everybody in your cell phone. I have hundreds of people in my cell phone. Oh my God, I got hundreds of people in my cell phone. Those are my warm contacts. I have people that I worked with a long time ago. Those are my warm contacts. You have, you can look at um, people you've done business with, your dry cleaners, your barber. Um, one thing that um, we used to do is we used to take every Friday um, donuts to firemen. And it was just something nice to do. They work hard, so we would take them donuts. And those are my, sin those are people, warm leads for me. And all we got to do is get a little bit more information. So I wanted to share this with you um, because I wanted you to get an idea of where I was going with, because it doesn't always have to be your family members. Some people don't like selling to their family members. It can be a headache. I get that. But sometimes like my mother-in-law, your family members need your help. And if they need your help, you know, I know everybody that's listening want to give that help. So uh, we can't leave our family members out because it's very important um, to offer them the same help as well. Um, so really what I, I would like to do is I would like to give you guys, we've never done this before, but I would like to give you guys an, an, an assignment. And what that assignment is, because I want, I want you to try this and I want you to try to really give it a chance and embrace it. So what the assignment is, is I would like for you to try to come up with 50 to 100 names. And then of those 50 to 100 names, I would like for you to add two or three of them to your database. Now I'm gonna go back because I wanted to show you down here at the bottom where it says master contact list. You can have something like this. You can create it however you want. The person's name, um, how do you know the person, their contact information, and then when did you originally contact and what with some other um, contacts that you've had with that person. Now, that would be something that, that could be the start of your database or you can create it however you want to. But the assignment is of the people that you come up with, take two or three of those people and genuinely try to first find their contact information, their mobile number, their email, their social media profile. In today's society, that information is quite easy to get. It's not hard at all. Try and get that information and then make an assertive effort to connect with them. And you're not connecting with them. You know, some people will say, well, connect with them and say, hey, I, this is Lisa. I, um, we haven't spoken in a while. I'm just reaching out to all of my friends to let them know what I do. I help people with their insurance needs. Um, I have access to hundreds of carriers. And I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. That's some people's approach. Uh, and it's not a bad approach. My approach, however, is more um, of a connection. So I'm calling to see how they're doing, what their life has been like, sharing grandkids' pictures and all that good stuff.
And then at some point, at some point, maybe on the second call, I'm letting them know what I can do, what I can do for them. And if they tell me, well, you know what? I, I'm at a company, I'm working. I don't worry about that because I have really good insurance. You know what? You are very lucky. I want you to keep my number just in case that ever change. But is there anybody else that you can think of that can use this type of help? Health insurance is a real problem in the United States. And I want to do my part to be able to help those individuals. And who would say no to that? Who would say no to that? You're not coming to them as a salesperson. You're coming to them genuinely as somebody who wants to help them or help somebody that they care about. So that's your assignment, okay? We've never done that. I don't know if you're gonna do it. I'm not gonna check to see if you do it, but I, do, I did wanna give you that. The next thing that I do want to go over is um, to let you know that um, something to also consider in the age of the web is um, the definition of warm leads or warm marketing is fairly flexible. Um, there are multiple ways that a prospect can engage with you. And these are these unknowing um, connections that I was talking about earlier. Um, you have people out there that might follow you on social media, visit your website, read your online articles, uh, maybe they follow your blogs. Um, those are people that you're connected with, but you don't even know you're connected with. The question is, how do I get connected with them? So that's what I want to help you with there. So what you can possibly do, these are some suggestions in connecting with, with some of your web page visitors or your social media visitors. Offer free guides in exchange for contact information. The better the type of guide you are offering, the more contact information you ask for. Um, provide email signups for your blogs. Great way to be able to follow up with them. What did you think about my blog? I wanted to follow up with you to give you get your input. And then you will be able to do those gathering questions to see if you can help. Um, there are visitor tracking software out there that will allow you to see where people are going on your website. What are they liking? And some of them actually can get you contact information. Encourage direct messaging on your um, platforms that you use, whether it's Facebook or you created a web page, um, add a call to action button. Um, that's always helpful as well. Highlight contact um, details. So, you know, make sure you have how they can contact you. Make sure it's in a place that they can see. And then the last one is um, have a live chat. This is probably my favorite one because what you can do is you can have a live chat where people can ask you questions. And as they're asking you questions, you can, you know, a lot of times you can have them sign up for it and give their contact information when they sign up. Or if you don't, you can have, you can instruct them to um, direct message you with um, additional questions that they might have. But live chats are really getting very, very popular now. And that's a great way to get your voice out there and let them know how knowledgeable you are. The last thing that I do wanna go over is um, referrals. Don't forget your referrals, guys. These are also warm leads. And if you are not asking for referrals from your clients, please, start. This is a huge, huge opportunity that you're missing if you don't. You know, right here, the statistic says referral business closes and converts 70% of the time. That's huge. That's awesome. So if you are not asking for referrals because you're nervous or because you think you're being intrusive, you're not. If your client is, is happy with what you just did for them, what makes you think they don't wanna tell somebody else about it? They probably are telling somebody else about it and you don't know. Or if you weren't able to help them because maybe it just wasn't a good fit, 
but they really liked your conversation, who else can I help? I know in this situation, this didn't work for you, but I wanna make sure I'm committed to helping as many people as I can. Who else do you know that I can help? What's the worst that can happen? They tell you no? That's not so bad, guys. That is not so bad, not when you have a 70% conversion ratio. So, guys, that is gonna do it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the information that was provided. And as always, if you have any questions whatsoever, please contact us at training at ahcpsales.com or you can call us at the 1877 number that is listed on your screen. And also, if you wanna rewatch this, um, because I went over a lot of information pretty quickly, you can rewatch this just by going to YouTube. Um, it should be available in about three or four days. Um, you would just need to look up the name of this particular um, sales topic, which is easy steps to increase your leads with warm marketing tactics. God bless all of you. Stay safe. And until next time, be good, everybody. See you next time. Have a good day.